this video is sponsored by VR Wave. With the recent shutdowns of the Nintendo Network online servers, the 3DS has been in the news recently. And that exposure might have kind of made you remember that the 3DS existed. And hey, maybe you want to go back and play some of those games that you love. And hey, 3DS emulation, fairly simple. But there's not really anything that can capture that feel of, you know, playing your favorite 3DS games, turning on the slider for the first time and thinking, whoa. Because there aren't really many modern devices that have support for stereoscopic 3D. Or there's at least one line of devices, the Quest. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to emulate your favorite 3DS games on the Quest 2, 3, and Pro with full 3D support, immersive visuals that make basically any 3DS game feel like a VR game, and all of the standard emulation features you're used to. Let's get started. To get Citra VR up and running, you'll need a few things. First, you'll need a Quest 2, 3, or Pro. The Quest 1 is unfortunately not supported here. You'll also need to have SideQuest installed on your PC or on the headset itself to install the emulator. You'll probably want it on a computer, no matter how you install the emulator itself, just to make it easier to transfer ROMs and other files over to the headset. You could also use ADB or an Android file manager to do so, or even like something like a maze inside the headset, but it's easier to just use SideQuest. To do any of that, you'll need a meta developer account. This is free to create, and if you've ever used SideQuest before, you already have one. Otherwise, I'll leave a link to a tutorial on installing SideQuest in the description below. And of course, just to be 100% clear, emulation is legal. Just need to remind you and kind of attempt to fend off Nintendo's lawyers. Don't pirate games, rip your physical copies that you own, and you should be in the clear. It is dead simple to mod a 3DS that you already own, and it's even easier to back up your games once you have done that. We'll be covering the PC side quest setup here. The only step that's different is installing the app. Start by plugging your quest into your computer and opening up SideQuest. In the search bar, type Citra VR and sideload the first result. At this point, you could use SideQuest to create your Citra configuration files and you know where you want to put the games and that. Um, I didn't do that because I didn't think of it. Uh, you can do that either in headset or in SideQuest itself. In your headset, head into your unknown sources menu in the app library and open up Citra VR. If you plan on using camera and microphone features, you can allow those here. I don't actually know how it uses the camera. I'll try and, you know, look at that before I start editing. Then you'll need to select your game and user directories. If you made those folders within SideQuest earlier, you can select them now or you can create them within the app. Unfortunately, you can't bind these to external storage, so you can't use like an ex a USB-C SSD or something like that you'll need to have your games and data on your internal drive. Once you've got all of your directories set up, you'll be given a warning that some games might have some performance issues while shaders are caching and processing and um, things like that. And hey, as you're watching this video, you'll be given this message from our sponsor, VRWave. If you've worn glasses and used a VR headset at the same time before, you'd be fully aware of the discomfort that that can bring. And what you might not be aware of is the damage that that can cause to your lenses. Even if you don't wear glasses, you might just be sick of the constant blue light and glare being blasted into your eyes every time you use your headset and that orange tint of the night mode toggle to actually remove a little it just doesn't look that great today's sponsor vr wave solves both of those problems with simple and effective magnetic lens inserts for the quest 2 3 psvr 2 apple vision pro valve index and even more if you wear glasses vr waves lenses can fix nearsightedness farsightedness and astigmatism without the need to squeeze your glasses in between the headset and the lenses and for everyone even if you don't wear glasses their plano lenses can help reduce blue light and glare throughout the headset and of course, you could just put those filters on your prescription lenses. How cool is that? The magnetic design of VR Waves lenses makes them dead simple to switch out for different prescriptions or just take them out entirely in a matter of seconds. And their worldwide shipping means anyone can get a better, more comfortable VR experience. And hey, even if you don't need magnetic lenses, VR Wave offers a ton of other accessories like carrying cases, face covers, and head straps. You can head to the link in the description to order your magnetic lenses or anything else from the VR Wave store today. Okay, back to the video. Getting games into Citra VR is dead simple. And remember, these are games that you own and have ripped from your system. If you have your backups stored on your computer, you can just move them into the games folder you created using SideQuest or ADB or something like that. If you've got your backups on a cloud platform like Dropbox, you could easily just download them onto the headset and move them into the right spot using something like a Maze File Manager if that's something that's easier for you. You could even theoretically back up a game to your 3DS, put the SD card in like a USB-C adapter and use a different file manager that supports external drives and like move it straight onto the headset. I don't know if you actually want to do that, but you definitely could. Once the backups have been placed into your games folder, pulling down from the top to refresh the app will display all of your games that you've added with cover art and other game information. Citra VR has its own compatibility spreadsheet that you should probably refer to before you start installing games. You'll be able to see how a game is rated on Citra's official site for platforms like PC and Android, and how it's rated by the community for Citra VR specifically 
including headset and OS specific version notes. At this point, you could start playing straight away. Just open up a game. You don't even need external controllers. It just binds the touch controllers for you. You can even use the pointer as touch input on the bottom screen. However, if you prefer, external controllers can be used over Bluetooth and USB directly into the side of the headset. If you want to get the maximum performance out of your gameplay, you can head into the settings menu and tinker with those settings a bit. As far as I can tell, it's mostly the exact same settings that are available on Citra for Android. And most of the modifications that you'd make on something like your phone or a Retroid handheld should also work here to improve performance. Obviously, the Quest 3 is, as far as I can tell, more powerful than something like a Retroid Pocket 3, which is what I have. And some of the performance issues you'll experience are solely because of how new the emulator is. In the settings menu, the main new menu that you'll find is the VR menu. In here, you'll be able to change things like the environment you're in during emulation, either pass through or avoid. The VR Extra Performance Mode, which forcefully sets certain toggles to improve performance. The CPU level your Quest will run at, whether or not it emulates a new 3DS system, and you can also toggle the immersive mode, which I'll talk more about later. You'll also have new settings to modify how strong the 3D effect is in game. I think this exists in the core version of Citra. That does support stereoscopic 3D, but you've probably never actually had to worry about it until now. The rest of the settings are everything you're already used to if you've used Citra before, like graphical settings, gamepad settings, and others. All right, time for the fun part, playing your games. Just select the game you wanna play, and you'll be straight in. You'll be thrown into the environment you selected with two massive screens in front of you, representing obviously the top and the bottom screen of a 3DS system. By default, the 3D effect is just enabled in supported games at around 50% strength. And once you get in, it's probably the best 3D experience for 3DS games you've ever seen. It's genuinely true 3D. It's none of the glasses free stuff that breaks the second you move your head. I, I obviously, I can't show this because it's a 2D YouTube video, you really just kind of have to experience it for yourself. I tried two games here, those being Super Smash Bros. 3DS and Metroid Samus Returns. Both of them ran okay, with some occasional stuttering and glitchiness that either comes from how new the emulator is or from the recording or because I'm using the past new environment. It's, there's a lot of factors, but they ran pretty well. I'd assume that if this version of Citra doesn't also stop development, this will continue to receive optimizations and performance updates. Smash Bros was the hardest to play with those performance issues because of that split second reaction time that you kind of need for fighter games. But Metroid was decent to play, at least in the first few minutes that I played for this testing. Again, the 3D effect was better than anything you'll get on official hardware and it's definitely absolutely worth the setup hassle if you have a supported headset. Uh, like, to be clear, you don't need a VR headset to experience Citra in 3D. If you have a 3D TV or another sort of 3D display, you can just enable stereoscopic 3D in Citra's settings. But a VR headset, if you have one, is probably gonna be the only actively used 3D display in your house. They kind of went out of style. And a 3D flat screen display just isn't gonna cut it when you try to turn on immersive mode, which obviously you can't. You can't do it on a TV because it's immersive. Once you've turned on immersive mode in the settings, opening a game is gonna send you into an immersive environment that just stretches the game around you and it kind of, similar to how Nintendo 64 and Dreamcast widescreen hacks work, just on a much bigger scale. The way that this works depends heavily on the game you're running. I've, it supposedly works pretty well in Mario Kart 7. I can't test that because it currently doesn't work on the V64 public test channel, but yeah, I've heard it's pretty good. Smash mainly just spreads out the stage run to a good chunkier field of view, and it does help out with the immersion a little bit. Metroid didn't really work at all with this mode. It just kind of displayed the game three different times for some reason, but it looks like it would work if it had some extra specific optimization for that title. You can see the background kind of rendering in behind the two displays. I think they could make it work pretty well. I should also mention that games like Mario Kart 7 seem to have an issue with like not having a me that's supposed to be fixed in Citra. That could be because I'm running it on V64 and it just crashes immediately. If it's not fixed, you can just install the Mii Maker app file into the emulator. Just make sure it has a .3ds extension. And um, for some reason, it doesn't appear in the games list. You'll just have to go and search for it. But once that's installed, you can make a me and it should work fine. Now that's about it. Getting this set up is pretty simple and you should be ready to play most 3DS games 
right within your headset. Hope this helped you guys out, and I'd love to hear your experiences in the comments with Citra VR and maybe other VR emulators that I don't know about. You can follow me over on Instagram, Twitter, whatever, everything else, with the links on screen and in the description below. Thanks again to VR Wave for sponsoring this video. You can check out their products in the link in the description below. If you want to see me struggle to set up some VR accessories, you can click over here to check out uh, my ultimate quest 3 setup or you can click over here to watch something the algorithm thinks you'll like. Thanks for watching, thanks for 3000 subs and I'll see you guys next time.